G'day everyone and welcome to my art channel Brushes with Beck. Today's video is a pet portrait video. This is a gorgeous little chihuahua that I had the honor of drawing recently and I just wanted to share the process with you guys. So this is an A4 pet portrait that I completed on Canson Matant's paper. Now this is the reverse fine grain side of the paper. And I'm using an assortment of different brands of pencils. I'm using, I think, 22 colors in total, mostly Faber-Castell Polychromos, a little bit of one or two Derwent drawings, some Derwent Color Soft, uh, some Derwent Light Fast, and a Caran d'Ache Luminance color as well. So a few different colors and to get all the colors I needed for this beautiful little dog. Now you can see I've started on the ear here and it's not highly detailed. There's suggestions of details and there's light and dark areas. And my reference photo, while they had a reasonable amount of details, a lot of, a lot of the darker areas had missing detail because it wasn't a very large photo. So you have to make do with what you can. So I added detail where possible, like the hairs on the top of the head. And there were other areas where I skipped adding detail and just used the light and shadow in the picture to speak for the uh, definition and fur texture of this beautiful little dog. Now this video is going by pretty quickly as you can see and that's just because this was a very long piece to draw and I didn't want it to be a ridiculously long video so it's going pretty quick but as you can see the general process is the same as my normal process for most drawings is slowly building up layers of color so even though my black areas are really really black I didn't go straight in with firm pressure I went in with Two different blacks mostly. I use the Derwent Light Fast Mars Black, which is actually quite a sort of a brownie black, and then the Polychromos Black as well. And those two combined, alternating layers between those two, ended up with some really rich dark black areas. And I was able to layer up multiple different colors in some other areas of black. So I wasn't just ending up with a flat black, I had a black with a bit of depth to it. So this little eye here was quite tricky because the eye is lacking a lot of detail in the reference photo. It's not very, e you can't see the pupil and it's just, you know, I had to sort of make sure I was really careful with how I placed that and really make the most of the reference photo for this one. Now I haven't shared the reference photo with you guys for this week's video because it is not my photo. It is the photo from the owner of this beautiful little dog. So I actually ended up drawing this dog because I donated a pet portrait to a local animal rescue for their fundraising raffle. So the person who is receiving this pet portrait gets it free of charge. And this is, you know, a, a raffle prize that they won for buying a ticket into that um, animal rescue. So I thought that was a really good cause that I could put um, some art towards and it helps get my name out there as well a little bit among the pet community. So moving through to some of the pale areas there and I'm using a lot of different pale tones. Um, the Derwent Color Soft Cream and the Color Soft Pale Peach as well as the Polychromos Ivory and in some areas, a little bit of polychromos cinnamon and luminance herculaneum red it really depended on the particular area of the dog. But once again, as with anything, just building up layers slowly. I did a lot of what you can see here of mapping in areas of color. There's a lot of different light and dark and color change areas in this dog. So I had to make sure I got everything in the right place with the markings. So a lot of the time I do just go in lightly with one of the colors from that area and I just map in those areas of color. And from that, once I've got that in place, I build up the strength of those colors around that, add in more brighter areas and darker areas and slowly build things up over time. Now, speaking before, like I did about the detail or the lack of detail in some areas, the muzzle of this dog, I haven't detailed fur in on because in the white area, you know, that fur is blown out, the whites are blown out, so there's not fur detail there. And I felt like the shading and the colors spoke for themselves for the fur rather than needing to detail fur in that area. 
So moving on to the other ear. Now the top half of this ear was actually cut off in the reference photo. So I actually flipped the top of the first ear and popped it into position and then altered it slightly so it didn't look like a duplicate ear because obviously the light's coming from a different direction. Things were gonna be a little bit different. So I made sure I altered it a little bit while still keeping it relatively, I tried to keep it accurate to the representation from the other ear. So I think that worked out pretty well. It did end up slightly different to the first ear in terms of level of detail, but I think it's worked out okay in the end. So I am going back and forth a bit between different areas here. I found when I got to this point, I was a little bit stuck on this ear. So I worked in some areas of the ear and then went back to the face a little bit and then back to the ear and back to the face. So a little bit of back and forth as I built up the depth in those colors and decided how dark I wanted to go and all those bits and pieces. It was sort of a, everything in this sort of thing is a bit of a work in progress until you get to a point where you are happy with it. And sometimes I don't know whether I'm happy with something until I've completed something else next to that area, if that makes sense. Like if you just draw the eyeball itself, the eyeball can look amazing. And then once you add in the fur and the surrounding areas around that eye, you might think, oh, I need to adjust that in the eye. And that's just looking at things, looking at aspects of a drawing relative to other aspects of a drawing. And that's why you might put in some bright areas and then you put in your dark areas next to it. And then you realize your brighter areas might need to be even brighter still to stand out a bit more. So it's important, even though I've finished off an ear, like the first ear before moving on to the rest of the piece, or I've finished off an area of the image, nothing is ever really finished until I'm 100% completed the drawing because I have to take a step back and look at the drawing once it's all finished and look at the piece as a whole and not just each aspect individually. So that's really important to do. Sometimes I, in the past, I have forgotten to step back at the end and look at the piece as a whole rather than just drawing each aspect individually. And that's also important in your drawing process as you're layering up your colors in your different sections and slowly building up that color, the different color tones and the strength of that color. It's also important to look back, step back and see how that, what you're drawing relates to the image as a whole and how it all ties in together. So it's important to get that section accurate, but it also needs to look like it fits with the rest of the drawing. So keep that in mind as you're working through a piece like this, that it's not just an eye that you're drawing, but it is a dog's face or a cat's face or whatever animal it is you're drawing. So down to the next eye, and this one was much more challenging than the first. The first one did have uh, some detail in it, I could tell roughly where stuff was, but I still had to sort of really be careful about what I did. But this one is really quite blacked out. And I did find this one very, very challenging because I wanted to make it a little bit more expressive, but making it too bright made it look incorrect. So I had to sort of go in with the colors that I thought were right and then take a step back. And as I said, look at it and decided, well, it's a bit too bright or too brown in color. So I had to go back in with some grays and some darker colors and just make it a little bit more muted and tone it down a bit. And I think that worked out quite nicely. So when you get a reference photo, um, if you're drawing wildlife or something that you've chosen, you can get almost any fantastic reference photo that you want. If you are drawing a pet portrait for someone, they may not have some very many good quality photos. And you have to learn to be able to work with something that's a little bit less than, you know, what you might ideally want to work with. And in that case, you don't need to add in all the detail of every first strand. You make sure your lights and darks are accurate and that you get those colors looking really good. And you can give a really good impression of a lot of fine detail without having to add all that fine detail in. So the nose was another area where this was a challenge because I had to make sure my light and dark areas were accurately placed, but the, the top border of the nose was a little bit 
hard to figure out in the reference photo. So I had to make sure I didn't go too high up with the nose, but that I gave it um, a nice blend out into the muzzle as well with some dark greys without making it too uh, inconspicuous about where the nose ended and the muzzle began. So at this point, I'm very, very pleased with how this drawing is coming along and I've honestly outdone my own expectations for this drawing and absolutely loving this process and this dog has been so much fun to draw. By the way, this dog's name is Jack. I forgot to mention that earlier. He is a Chihuahua. I think I did mention that. And so the amazing thing about Jack is that he is 19 years old, which is a beautiful age for a little Chihuahua. And so it's fantastic to see when pets are so long lived. So it's a real pleasure to draw a senior pet as well. Well, any pet really for someone, um, but to know that they've lived a beautiful, long, happy life is wonderful. So moving down to the neck and chest of this little dog. Now, as once again, with these black areas, there's not a lot of detail visible on the photo itself. So I'm just focusing on getting it to the right, um, the right level of darkness that I need and making sure that I don't make the whole black area one tone of black. I have to have a little bit of variance in it as it curves around the front of the leg there and make sure that I am extending it correctly into the white areas and making sure that looks nice and accurate. Now just a quick side note, it has just started raining here. I'm hoping you can't hear that on my recording but unfortunately I'm just going to have to push through with that. So moving through there, you can see I've gotten my blacks nice and dark, but I've left some slightly lighter areas for some variance in tone there. And just moving into this sort of tanny colored area, I suppose, I've popped it in a little bit peachy and moving through to the front of the chest. Now, once again, this is one of those areas where I map in my colors quite lightly with my one of my undertones. So this, I believe, is the Nougat from Polychromos. And then once I've mapped in those darker bits, then I can also go in with some lighter tones and work around those and uh, work build up the color from there. So I find that's one of the easiest ways to approach fur is don't look at it as a whole thing. Work out what's my darkest tone or my lightest tone and put that in and do some light mapping. If it's a really dark tone, don't, don't press really hard. Just use it really softly and map in those uh, different fur strands and different areas and clumps of fur. Work all that out and then proceed with really starting to detail up your color and really apply that in. So in the lower section, you can see I've mapped in areas with the white instead of with the nougat. And then that will help me in that area, maintain those really bright white areas and make sure I don't go over them um, with another color. So moving down, you can see there's quite a shadowed area here. This is still white fur, but it is in really deep shadow. So it needs to be uh, matching sort of the color tone in the photo reference. Otherwise the uh, light and dark areas of this dog aren't going to look accurate. So this whole chest area was um, a little bit challenging. There was the transitions from the black to the white, which is always quite tricky. And then making sure that I got that fur detail in flowing in the correct direction, which is always really important with fur with any animal. You want to make sure the fur is traveling in the right direction. And that's quite tricky when the reference photo doesn't always show which direction the fur is traveling. It can be, it, it was sort of a bit misleading in some areas and I had to make sure I was getting it correct. And then also just making sure that um, my color tones were correct for the white that was in shadow. White is a bit quite challenging because often it's not very white. You have to use a lot of other colors in it and that was just making sure I was drawing what I was actually seeing and not what I thought I was seeing. So that's a really challenging thing when drawing white fur. So as you can see, as with almost anything else that you draw, it's just a matter of building up layers. And I do apologize for this blurry section here. For some reason, 
Uh, my camera got out of focus for a couple of minutes while I was drawing, so, but not for very long. As you can see, back to being in focus. And so this area here is another black section. Now I started quite far back with the black pencil because I wanted to make sure I didn't go too far in with that and block off too much of the white area. So I started pretty far back and started working in the fur texture. And once I sort of went through that process once, then I looked back at it and back at my reference photo and then slowly pushed back those um, strands of fur to add more and more black in so that it wasn't, um, so that it, it was in the right position. So something like this, it's always important, uh, like less is more. So I don't want to overdo it with the black early on. It's fine if I start too far back with the black and then slowly move it across into where it's in the correct position rather than going too far back with the black initially and then not being able to recover those paler strands of fur. So at this point, very close to being done. I've just got a little bit of detail in these lower areas, a few little adjustments here and there and making sure that everything is just how I want it to be in this lower part of this beautiful little dog. And then I've got to add some little whiskers in around the face and this beautiful portrait of this chihuahua is complete. So I do hope you've enjoyed this video and got something out of it. Thank you very much for watching. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up, comment down below, subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you again next time for another video. Stay creative.